ain't no angel, but you'll do. Now, if you have spent any time around me, or really around anyone else, you'll realize that they ain't no angels, but they can be good enough. They'll do. I jokingly tell people that I cannot subscribe to the five points of John Calvin's theology beautifully made into the acronym TULIP for T, total depravity of human nature, U, unconditional election, L, limited atonement, I, irresistible grace, and P, perseverance of the saints. Now, the finer points of Mr. Calvin's theology, a point for another day, perhaps, but I can absolutely subscribe to the T in TULIP because y'all ain't no angels. Neither am I. Will do. Welcome to the stream. My name's Father Charles. I am the pastor here. We are excited you are coming in and worshiping with us today. Would love to connect with you down in the comments. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Consider a financial contribution using the link. That would be a huge blessing to us. And jump on our website, smaae.org. Want to connect with you. So let's jump to it. So often we hear in popular culture and in how we talk about people, particularly someone who is very religious or spiritual or helpful, they're an angel. And when someone dies, especially if it is someone young, Someone will say, mm, God just needed another angel. Deeply hurtful and also untrue, but spoken from a place of love and care. See, we have this sense that these angels are beautiful, mythical creatures that exist in heaven to do God's work. And that if we work really hard enough and are good enough, we will earn our wings someday and God will make us angels. Well, I've got good news slash bad news here for you. You can't earn your wings and you aren't going to become an angel no matter how hard you try. But the good news is, is you don't want to anyways. Because we are already becoming hagios. We're becoming saints. Check out our sermon from two weeks ago on the YouTube page if you missed it. But we shall possess the kingdom of heaven, as the prophet Daniel tells us in Daniel 7.22. And we are born to be co-rulers with Christ, Revelation to St. John, chapter 20, verse 4. You see, as God's image bearers, we are not angels and can never be. But we are brothers and sisters of Jesus which the angels can never be. Today at my church, we celebrate the title feast of St. Michael and all the angels, sometimes called Michaelmas. And in doing so, we are reminded of the important ministry of angels and what they do. We had an old tradition here at St. Mike's of calling one another, especially those who were particularly dedicated and faithful, angels. But we ain't angels, they aren't angels but we can do. See, angels are here as a help in these present times. Angels are sent by the Father to strengthen those who call upon his name. Angels work as the Father's messengers, letting people know about the goodness of God. But we, as humans, are created in the image and likeness of God, as co-heirs and inheritors with Christ, to share in the ministry of messaging, even though we're not angels, but we can do as messengers nonetheless. Turn with me in Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 to 17. Genesis is right in the beginning of the Bible, first book, if you're wondering where to jump in at in your own Bible. Now, Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. There he came to a certain place and stayed there at night. Because the sun had set, taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed. Behold, there was a ladder set up upon the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending upon it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord your God, the God of Abraham and Isaac. 
The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. Jacob is having a vision in his sleep of a great ladder leading to heaven with angels coming and going up and down between heaven and earth and earth and heaven. And the angels are coming and going and they're doing the work of the Father and serving as messengers. It's literally what angel means, angelos, messenger. And they are helpers for people. And they're just doing the things angels like they do. Jacob hears the voice of the Father who speaks directly to him and says, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, the God of Isaac. And the land upon which you lie, I'm going to bring you back to it and to your offspring. And your offspring are going to be like dust just everywhere. And you'll spread abroad to the north and south and east and to the west. And in you and your children shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you always, wherever you go. Then Jacob wakes up from his sleep. And he said, surely, surely the Lord is in this place. And I didn't even know. it. Jacob was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the very house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. Now, Jacob is not an angel in the technical sense because he's a human and can never be an angel. But you might say that in his own behavior and choices, Jacob embraced the tea and total depravity of Tulip just a little too much. To put it less gently, he was a bit of a scoundrel. This is the Jacob who partnered with his mom to steal his brother's birthright. This is the Jacob who has a falling out with his father-in-law and flees in fear to be greeted by the brother he had cheated out of his birthright to be fearful again. This is the Jacob who was always working an angle of some sort. This is the Jacob who created favoritism and discontent between his children, which led to division and one of them being sold off by his brothers as a slave. This is also the Jacob through whom all of creation was to be blessed. This is also the Jacob whose name is changed from Jacob, meaning supplanter, from stealing his brother's birthright to Israel, meaning one who struggles with God because Jacob won't let go of the father, even in the midst of his questionable choices. And this is the wonderful thing about God. He is not counting on you being an angel. He is counting on you not being an angel. He is hoping that you are like Jacob and won't let go of him. The story of humanity and of God is the story of the worst, least angelic people becoming mighty witnesses to the goodness of God, even in their own messed up lives. Jacob, well, we already talked about his issues, but David, the great king of Israel before Jesus, was a murderer and an adulterer. Solomon, his son, had the whole kingdom of Israel torn away from his descendants because of his unfaithfulness. Paul wrote like two-thirds of the New Testament, was a murderer. Peter, the first pope, denied Jesus three times on the day of the crucifixion, and on and on and on. God takes us as we are, and we become something beautiful and wonderful and extraordinary when we cooperate with his grace. God's not counting on you being an angel any more than he counted on those folks being angels, but just the opposite. You aren't the best and you never will be. I'm not the best and never will be, but we know and belong and serve the best. And he is more than sufficient for who we are. He is forming us into his heirs and brothers and sisters. We ain't angels, but we'll do. And you ain't no angel, but you'll do if you are walking the way of Jesus with us. He is counting on you to commit with the people 
sitting right beside you now, walking and living the way of Jesus together. He is counting on you, holding one another accountable. He's counting on you, bearing one another up in all things to share the goodness of God. Will you commit to walking the way of Jesus with us? Can you call a friend, text them, turn to them, email them? I don't care. Can you connect with us and tell them, I will walk the way of Jesus with you? And these people here, I will. Amen. Welcome to the prayers of the people here at The String. My name is Deacon Christopher Johnson. I am the transitional deacon at St. Michael and All Angels Episcopal Church in Columbia, South Carolina. And with that, let us begin the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and the world. Grant Almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly and in the service of others, and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of salvation. We ask this especially for Ned and Gwen Borden, Trudy Holloman, Faye Jax, and Carlos Salter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we make sure with all your saints in their eternal kingdom. We ask especially that you pray for Edward Eisberg and Dominique Wilson. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, watch over us, keep us close to you, that as we draw closer to you, you may increase in us. We ask this in your name. Have a blessed week.